Hey everyone, uh, we're gonna keep going on blockchain. This is gonna be the last for now uh, blockchain video. We're gonna get into something else next. But um, at the end of this video, we're gonna go into a screen share where I'm gonna show you where we can create a blockchain within the Azure um, cloud. Microsoft, allow Microsoft allows you to create blockchain using Strato in the Azure cloud. So it's hosted in the Azure cloud. But it's very technical. So if you're going to extend that, you're going to have to code. You're going to create your own storage through code uh, and contracts, etc. There's also a website out there, which I'll show you as well, where you can go in and create a blockchain visually. And it shows you how the peer network actually synchronizes and the messages between the peers, which I think is very interesting. But I th let's take a moment and think about blockchain for a second. What is blockchain? So blockchain became very, very hyped uh, when we got cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, right? And Bitcoin served the purpose as, you know, being extremely secure, uh, distributed, and it's for, you know, money, but slow moving money, not fast moving money. Bitcoin actually, Bitcoin network is, is not fast enough to handle transactions just like credit cards or even bank transactions. So there is a negative to that. Now, the blockchain concept became popularized and now everybody wants to solve everything with a blockchain which i think is kind of wrong it's sort of like if you have a hammer everything looks like a nail you know if, if the only thing you have is a hammer so uh, there are there's public blockchains which means that they are distributed all over uh, and different servers are uh, synchronizing and then there are private blockchains which are probably just a handful of servers. There's a difference between those. Uh, the public ones are very slow in synchronizing and validating the data, whereas the private ones could be tweaked to be faster and they serve a specific purpose. So I'm gonna put just two things up there. First you have, let's say Bitcoin, which is sort of public, right? It's all over, it's being shared. And the proof of work algorithm, which when you add a new blockchain into the chain, uh, it goes through this uh, proof of work algorithm, is slow. It's slow for if you have a lot of nodes, every node has to be informed. They all have to make sure that it's correct, etc. If you have something called private blockchain, and I'm going to put an example here as the IBM Food Trust, because we are working in uh, food and perishables a lot and we're now uh, working with IBM food trusts uh, Microsoft IBM friends of course um, and IBM's food trust is meant to be a traceability database public traceability where you can actually push slot numbers into uh, the blockchain IBM's blockchain and and you have a full string of blocks and traceability for that so for example um, if you're shipping a pallet of apples to a grocery store, that, uh, that pallet has a lot number. It gets shipped from a farm to a, gro uh, to a distributor and then to a grocery store. And you can then query that lot number all the way back and you would know exactly what farm produced those apples and to which stores it went. So, and this is traceability, you know, traceability. And this is, of course, currency. I'll just put currency. So for traceability's sake, uh, no one is going to really hack that. Nobody really cares to change the information about the expiration date of a couple of pallets of apples. I mean, I don't think we're going to have a huge team of hackers trying to change that. Although we do have a huge team of hackers trying to crack the currency, because that's money. So this doesn't have to be um, the proof of work algorithm. I'm going to put that here is slow because it's validating. The slower it is, the better it is. Whereas the proof of work algorithm here could be fast because we don't have to be as secure. So this is sort of a niche uh, implementation of a blockchain. And I think now we're starting to use the term blockchain loosely. Right? We have two versions. And I think what's going to happen in the future is the whole blockchain concept is going to break up into all types of different applications of blockchain that are going to have t different technical implementations. that are specific to 
what the subject is. Anyways, for right now though, um, the, the market is kind of throwing this back and forth and we do have availability on Azure to create our own and play around with it. And uh, this is being developed and Walmart is actually going to take this on and require everybody to use this blockchain by October this year. So we'll see what happens. All right, off to the screen share. Hey guys, so we're now going to go into the system. I've actually logged into the Azure portal. And so this is kind of the back end of uh, Microsoft's cloud. And you can actually get into building your own machines in here, uh, creating an Active Directory, a lot of technical stuff. But just as a point, I'm going to look up here, Strato. And what I get is a blockchain. So Microsoft Azure allows you to get into a blockchain in the Azure. Uh, and so you can create your own blockchain here. All you have to do is just hit create and then start connecting to the blockchain using programming. And uh, I really don't get into coding in this, this series, but I want you to understand that you can create your own blockchain using Azure. Uh, so if you're a developer, if you have a developer on staff or you are a developer or um, you have a company that you work with, they can set that up for you. Um, and you can use Azure for that. Now, also what I wanted to touch base on is you can get here into um, a blockchain demo on the net. And this is actually a cool site that I looked at. And here we have a blockchain. I've created a blockchain um, and I have three peers in my blockchain, which means that I have three nodes which are synchronizing the block or the blockchain. And this is the blockchain. I have the Genesis block where the previous hash is zero. The hash for this particular block is this long string here. And so that turns out to be the previous hash of next block and then the next one here. So you can see it visually pretty well. If I want to add data, for example, uh, coffee mug and I add new block. Now this becomes a new block on the chain. So, um, and it gets a new hash and it's connected to the previous one. And if I look at, and I was actually in trouble, trouble is one of the nodes. If I go to Marco, I can see that Marco has already uh, synchronized this chain. And if I go to Satoshi uh, and I get here a promo, I'll just click that out. I can see Satoshi has already synchronized as well. So all of the chains are now in harmony and these could be all around the world. Um, I could go ahead and take a look at what's going on here and you can see the connection string that happened as uh, the blockchains were communicating and moving the blocks around. So you can read through that here. Um, so it's a really good graphical example of a distributed um, storage system, which blockchain is, with uh, the uh, crypt crypto security as it comes with blockchain. Uh, and essentially, if you wanted to do this yourself, you can build one here in Azure. And uh, but you have to know programming because uh, once you build this blockchain up, it basically says, OK, so what contracts would you like to code for me or what type of storage would you like to code for me? And you have to uh, do that with programming and compile it to actually get it to do something meaningful. This is just the basis and it hosts the blockchain. So it, the engine is there. So I hope that explained a little bit where we can go with this blockchain stuff. Until next time, thank you.